Well, guys, I'm finally home from what has been a whirlwind two weeks in the USA. And I guess one of the most pleasing things for me over there was knowing that my eBay business was running incredibly smoothly back here. And that was all thanks to Courtney. She was working 20 hours a week for me for both of the weeks that I was away. And she was able to maintain the eBay store perfectly. Listings went up on time, shipping was completed. There was no real customer service uh, concerns. And I'm just incredibly thankful for the hard work that she has put in. So I wanted to sit down in this video and just find out a bit about how those two weeks were for Courtney. My first question for you is, was it more enjoyable with me now back home or was it more enjoyable when I was away? More enjoyable when you're back home. Since, oh, now that I'm back. Mm. See, I thought the answer might have been different. What? <laughs> what situation? <laughs> nah, it is. What did you uh, What did you enjoy the most, or what? Actually, no. What was the most difficult part of the two weeks? Definitely the limited time with the finding the stock. Because we didn't have all the SKUs, did we? No. We um. We tried really hard before I left for the States to skew up as much as possible because my biggest limitation with this eBay business is the skewing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so Courtney and I worked pretty heavily and got about half. Was it half, do you th would you say? Yeah, probably. We did the tough stuff first, the DVDs. And that, that was that manageable or was that really mm. tough? No, because I feel like we only had half of them done. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them were always the ones that we weren't skewed. Of course. Couldn't so, find. Yeah, it took me longer. So that was a bit of a time kill for you. Yeah. I just want to say a massive thank you for all of your assistance uh, over those two weeks because it's the first time I've ever been able to leave for a big trip and know that the eBay store was running as though I was still there. Yeah. Um, so that, that was really cool. But um, mm. now that we're back, we're crushing the listings. We've got a lot of Pokemon cards. We've got a lot of sales. And we've got uh, 10 of our best sold items from this weekend to take you guys through. So let's get into those. Yeah. Before we dive into those sales though, I wanted to have a quick chat about this number right here. 43% of you are watching these videos, but you have yet to hit the subscribe button. It's my promise to you that if we can get you on board this channel and have you hit that subscribe, that I promise that I'll bring you the best videos that I possibly can. I'm going really hard on content between now and Christmas time, and I really wanna grow this community to be the biggest and the best that it can be. So that's my promise to you. It'd be great to get you on board. I look forward to having you a part of the journey. We're gonna be doing the top 10 sales from over the weekend. This one was number 10 and number eight. Uh, two different Pokemon cards that have come through and I've just actually been looking through the numbers before we hit the record button. And I'll put a bit of an overlay and show you these numbers that we're looking at here. But we've done $1,800 in total Pokemon sales to date, which is pretty exciting considering it's been back now for a month uh, from that big buyout that we had when we were over in the USA. Uh, we've been listing Courtney and I up pretty crazy with these cards, $2,600 worth of total valued listings that are yet to go on to sell. Um, but after fees and postage, we've now made in the Pokemon cards $760 in profit, which is really quite crazy numbers. And we've still got so many more cards to try and sell. Uh, and we've also got those graded cards that we're trying to get back in around Christmas time. Um, I think there's about six cards that we're going to go and send off and have come back and they're going to be worth some pretty crazy money. So. Uh, these two were just another couple of examples out of the 68 that have already gone on to sell. Uh, this Clefairy uh, right here ended up selling for $50. That was a base set. I've learned so much about Pokemon cards over the last couple of weeks. Um, this one's card number five out of 102 of the base set. Holographic card, um, generally selling for around about the $50 that we got for that one there. And then this one here as well. This one came in for $42. We actually had four different cards that were the exact same as this. This is a Red Cheeks Pikachu, uh, which was only printed uh, on a number limited occasion. There was only limited prints of the Red Cheek, uh, but there's a large supply of the Yellow Cheek. So I've come to find out. Um, so we've sold off all four of these for around about that $40 to $50 each. So um, there's been $150 to $200 worth of Red Cheek Pikachu cards uh, sell over the last month. So there's two examples there. We are putting them into top loaders. We're putting them into penny sleeves. Then we're putting them into a pad of mailer. We are also putting, uh, we, we've, our card game has just gone through the roof. We're, we're also putting this cardboard like that before it goes into the padded mailer. So 
they're not getting damaged. We've sold 68 of them now and we've not had an issue with postage. So if you're trying to sell cards, uh, that's a really good way to go about your shipping. Let me know, any card collectors out there, if we're not doing the right thing, uh, happy to take advice. But um, yeah, to have these two cards go on to sell and only add to what is a pretty crazy uh, allocation of sales, it was the best thing to obviously come out of that America trip. Um, and, and what I really want to stress in this video as well, there's been a lot of questions about the Pokemon cards and obviously there's a really quick snapshot there uh, around how many, how many sales have come through and where our revenue is currently at. Um, I am going to go through a, pro, a full process of actually what cards we actually had, um, what cards have sold, the different price points, the different discrepancies of card, what I look for, all of the grading, um, I guess, process that I've looked into. Um, so all of that will come in a dedicated video. Uh, I just wanted to say that in this video, it's not the only Pokemon chat. We're going to do a full breakdown of just how good that deal was. Um, not sure when it will come out, maybe a few more weeks time, but hit the subscribe button. There'll be some pretty cool info around all of that. Okay, these are the next ones. These ones came in at number nine. Um, they were a $45 sale price. Uh, these were the Feel of Disruptors. Now, if you were watching that USA series, I went out to the Goodwill bins uh, and you're paying by the pound in these locations. And it's a real thrill every single time that I go out there and have a look. Uh, and I found these and they are pretty common shoes, which I don't typically buy when I'm at the Goodwill bins. Anything because obviously shipping it back to Australia, you don't need to buy stuff like this if you're seeing it in your local area uh, quite commonly. Um, even though it kind of went against what I do when I'm at the bins, I did go ahead and buy these because they were only a dollar and I knew that they would sell pretty well. And now we've only been back for four weeks. These have already sold for 45. So, you know, $2 into $45. Yes, I had to ship them back from America, uh, but we still got a fantastic sale price and a really good sell through rate uh, on these shoes here. So feeler disruptors are pretty much the only feeler shoe that I would buy. I wouldn't say it's a great brand, but it's a very good make of shoe. The Feel of Disruptor, add it to your list if you can find it, which they are pretty common. Um, clearly, they sell really well. Okay, coming in at number six, or number seven, I should say, we've got Super Mario Galaxy 2 on the Nintendo Wii. A very crispy case on this. That is clean as, clean as brand new, really. Um, all of the manuals, everything inside. We've got all the discs. This one's a double disc, as you can see there. The actual condition of disc as well is actually really good. There's no real issues on that. Um, it's in very good condition. At $2, Courtney and I paid in a thrift store last Thursday. This obviously being a Monday morning. Um, we've had this one up on our store for three days and we had a sale over the weekend. So about a 48 hour sell through rate uh, for that one there. And we got a $50 sale price for it. So this was actually, I don't think it's something that we've published onto the channel yet. We will over the next few days. Maybe later this week, we'll publish the find. Uh, of this, but this was an incredible grab because not only was it this game, but there was also a number of other games. It was a big allotment of, I think, about eight video games, and we paid $2 each. It was like $16, $16 yeah. in that store. Um, a really cool scenario that was all filmed on camera, uh, and we'll bring that out over the next couple of days. But that one there, anything Mario, Nintendo Wii, uh, a big win there on that one. All right, now this was a really cool find. This was a Star Wars action figure, obviously brand new as you guys can see. This is the Empire Strikes Back. This is Yoda. Um, now this one, there was some crazy comps on eBay for this. And I, I found this in the kids section of a thrift store and it caught my eye for two reasons. One, it was brand new in its box rather than just a loose action figure. It's got all of its little accessory bits. You can see his sword there and his little cane. So those sorts of little accessories can sell for some really good money if you were to find it loose. Um, we obviously found it brand new and sealed in box and it is Star Wars, which is a good selling brand. Um, so I did some comp research and this thing went on to sell for $50 and that's exactly what we got for it. So um, the rule or the, uh, I guess the... the um, shipping of it? Yeah, no, the shipping of it, I'll put it into a box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some bubble wrap and some butcher's paper, put it into a low lying box. Yeah. Um, but I think the big thing here with this is that if you were going into a kid's section, you'd probably neglect a lot of potentially really good valued items. Um, so I'm starting to look in the kids section a whole lot more. I'm looking in the toys and I'm doing my research. And by doing that in store, I was able to come away with this guy, 50 bucks. I paid, I think it was five bucks. All right, I think we're at number five now, guys. I've got these, which I bought last Thursday as well, in the same thrift run as the video games that we were just speaking about. These are the Under Armour Hover Machiners and now the Storm version. Now, as you can see there, the, the, the condition of these is fantastic. And that's the biggest thing that we look at when we're doing shoes now. Yes, it might have a good average sale price on eBay, but if it's really worn 
And as you can see here, these ones just aren't. There's so much life left in them. They're almost like new, to be fair. Um, that's just gonna give you a better chance of a higher average sale price. These also are a size US 10, and shoe size is another very, very big consideration when I'm buying these. If these were a size six, maybe I don't get as much of an average sale price, or maybe I don't even go ahead and purchase it because they don't sell as well or as quickly as more of a common shoe size. Size US 10 is something that you really wanna find, and bigger is always better. So if even an 11 or a 12 or a 13, uh, would be more preferred than maybe a US 6, 7 or 8. Um, so they came through at a $50 sale price, and to be fair, given the, the fast sell through rate of a couple of days, we probably could have listed these up for maybe $70 or $80, held out, and we might have got a $60 or a $70 sale price if we waited. Uh, but I'm in the game of trying to move things on, and I think $50 off a $15 purchase uh, would be about a, a net of about $15, $20 profit, and I think that's pretty good every single time you sell a pair of shoes. Now, my sister watches this channel and she's watching this video right now, and this is hers, this next sale. Um, it was one that we actually had when we were a kid. I used to love them as well. Remember the Yowies? Well, I've got all six original Yowies here as plush toys, and they've all got their tags, and they all say, what year was it? The 90s, though. They would have been like a 96 or a 97 plush toy. And uh, all six of them are in here, and they're all in pretty good nick. And my sister said to me, she said, yeah, you can go on and sell them. I don't need them anymore. And I realized they were worth about 60 to 80 odd dollars, or about 10 bucks each. And uh, when she heard they were worth that much, she kind of wanted to hold on to them or at least get the money out of the sale. But L, I won't be giving you any money uh, for these. This is my sale. And uh, $60 is what we're able to get for them. She gave them to me like two or three months ago now. So um, she's probably forgotten that they've gone on to sell until she's watching this. But yeah, $60 sale price on some old plush toys, the Yowies. Um, these are the chocolate. They're the chocolates, aren't they? Yeah. You had the chocolate and they were the toy or the yeah, thing that came with it? they're gross. What, these? Yeah, the chocolates. Oh, not these. Yeah, no. These are cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, 60 bucks on the Yowies. Pretty cool sale. Not that we're doing a ton of plush toys. We kind of phased out of the plush. We used to sell them back when I first started a couple of years ago, but um, every so often you get ones that are worth quite a bit of money, and the Yowies are a perfect example of that. Right, now check this out, guys. We've got a really heavily corroded Game Boy Color. I bought this when I was over in the US. This came with the Pokemon cards. It came with actually about 25 different uh, Game Boy Color video games as well. And they've all gone on to sell fantastically, but I was really reluctant. And I was unsure as to what to do with that, considering it wasn't gonna play back with such corrosion. Uh, and then Courtney and I decided last Thursday when we got back from thrifting, uh, we were chasing a few items and I said, look, let's just list this up for parts. We'll do parts and repair, just detail exactly what it is, take very good photos, show the corrosion, show that this thing basically wasn't gonna work uh, and see what we can get for it. And then when I looked at the comps for that, because this thing would be worth about $120 if it was in great working order, but the, the, for parts comps were worth about $60 to $70, which I was quite surprised by. I thought it might've been more like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, so we went up and we listed this thing for $65 for parts and repair, and we got the full asking price in 24 hours. So I think that was actually quite eye-opening. Um, and I think yeah, for a lot crazy. of you guys, like you wouldn't have probably assumed it would have no. sold in a day. No. Um, and for a beginner out there, you would probably look around your house, you'd find something like that, and you'd, you'd discard it because it doesn't work. But somebody, a collector out there, or someone that knows a thing or two about this item, uh, might be able to detach it and use different bits and pieces for their own device that they're trying to repair. Um, so you can't really discredit the reasonings that people buy this sort of thing. Um, the only way you can get something sold is to list it up. I think that's the biggest thing that we did last Thursday, uh, is we just chose to list it, we whacked a price on it, and now we've got $65 for something that I personally didn't think would be worth anything before we did. All right, now we were saying before about the Under Armours being US size 10. Funnily enough, these Nikes are also a US size 10. Um, these are the Nike M2K Technos, Courtney's just informed me. Um, this was one that you listed up and I actually don't even remember how I, yeah. I don't even know where I got these from. Um, I don't think the sell through rate was like forever because I don't remember having these shoes in these storage tubs for too long. Um, we got a $110 worth of a sale price for these. When I saw them come through, I was ecstatic because um, I didn't even know that we had them listed up that high. I didn't know that you listed them for 110. Um, so to see 110 bucks come through, US size 10, pair of Nike running shoes. They look a little bit vintage, like old school to me, Yeah. but they're a 2018 model. So they're only five years old. I've just got an old school look about them. 
Um, so yeah, really cool sale. Anything over $100, our average sale price in this eBay business is around about $30 to $35. And I actually really want to place a large focus between now and Christmas. Courtney and I, have been, we've been speaking about this a lot. Yeah. We want to get the average sale price up to about $50 to $60. Um, and we really want to strip back on, on buying those low-end DVDs uh, that we've been buying before Christmas. Oh, sorry, before I went away to the US. Uh, and we really want to find you know items like this that are worth sort of plus fifty dollars and start to get the average up. Um, so to see something like one hundred and ten come through is always a great moment um, during the week. So number two, it wasn't our best sale. I'm about to show you that now. All right, this is the best one, and as you can see, we've got quite a number more to sell. We've got another three here, but this one should be a two XL, which it is. Um, so what you're looking at here is a Bunnings Trade uh, hoodie that was a mates in construction charity hoodie. So I don't really like to talk about retail arbitrage too much. You can talk about thrift store items because there's no guarantee that any one of you guys watching is gonna realize that there's a plush toy in a certain store in a certain location. Whereas if I talk about this being a retail arbitrage, you could walk into any Bunnings warehouse, you could really lower the market um, if I tell you about how much these things go for. Um, so that's why I don't do it. But because this is a mates in construction version, um, these ones here only pop out once a year. And I knew of that, and they were given out to all of their staff, and then the leftovers were handed out in store for $50. And I walked into a Bunnings store about two weeks ago now, and I saw that there were 10 of them on the rack for 50 bucks. And I've ended up buying six of them, and we've had two of them go on to sell. This sold for $135, but I bought them for $50 each in store. So there's gonna be about $60 in profit on this item. Um, from a bit of a retail arbitrage. Bunnings Warehouse, our local timber and hardware company, does do some pretty re uh, crazy retail arbitrage opportunities. And these jumpers have been some of the best that I've ever purchased. So um, there's a bit of a, a hint for you guys uh, with regards to retail arbitrage. Like I said, we don't talk about it a lot because there is some very, very good money out there that we prefer to keep the knowledge to ourselves. So there you go, guys. A pretty decent what sold, to be fair, because we're really trying to increase that average sale price, and we've already started to see it come through this weekend. So that's really, really promising. Courtney's gonna go ahead and uh, start to ship off all of those items that I've taken you through, plus the 15 other sales uh, that we're able to get this weekend. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. We've got plenty of listing to do this afternoon as well. Plenty of content to make as well. I've done a whole lot of thrifting over the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna bring it to you on this channel over the next few days. So um, hopefully you can join us for that. Appreciate you being here for this one. There's another video to go and tune into, guys. We look forward to seeing you soon.